we are um, up in the mountains to the north of Angkor, and this is a site called Kabal Spian. Well, it's the headwaters uh, for the rivers that flow down to Angkor. Uh, and it also is a, a, a significant religious site because the riverbed is carved in uh, with various symbols that uh, sanctify the water before it flows down to the holy city. So Angkor um, really is characterised by its water management infrastructure. It's perhaps the largest example of intensive water management uh, in the pre-industrial world. Water was important not only for agriculture, but it was also very much tied up with the power of the king um, and his ability to manage water. Uh, so uh, water flows through the city, but it was also the lifeblood of the city. So Angkor is actually a, a constellation of different uh, cities. Um, it was founded in the early 9th century and uh, was abandoned in the 15th century AD. It was at its peak the largest pre-industrial city on earth. And so while temples like Angkor Wat behind me are, are very famous, they only represent one of many dozens of similarly enormous temples that are scattered throughout this capital district. Uh, and uh, all of that is linked by a water management infrastructure which had no equal on earth. So what we think is going on here is that you have an episode uh, of very intense rainfall um, uh, in the uh, uh, latter part of the 15th century. Uh, which is uh, driving huge amounts of water through this system, a system that was already um, compromised by a series of droughts uh, and it's uh, creating a huge amount of damage to infrastructure, damage which the people that were living here at the time simply couldn't repair. And we're standing on the bed of a canal that would have taken the flow of that water to the south through these corbelled arches of this bridge. This is called the uh, which just means uh, stone bridge. Uh, but it's a significant site partly because the bridge uh, has uh, been completely destroyed at its western end uh, by the river and because the river has cut down into its bed by up to eight metres, which is suggestive of a, of a huge flow of water through this canal that destroyed infrastructure and, and carved out a new river course. The changes we're seeing or will see over the next maybe 50 years to the Lower Mekong are uh, system-wide and in many ways unprecedented and that was very much the same situation that confronted the medieval Khmer in the sense that they were confronted by a period of climatic instability that they had no uh, anticipation of or experience of that fundamentally changed the rules of the game that they'd been playing for hundreds of years. A similar kind of scale of challenge uh, confronted by uh, contemporary communities around the lake now. Uh, as the climate begins to change, as the, uh, the hydrological variability begins to be impacted by damming, uh, these are profound system-wide changes that alter the way that the game is being played.